On this week's Flame Central, Malik Willis is headed to the Music City. And he's not the only Flame with an NFL opportunity. Plus a huge test for Liberty Softball, LU Tennis is going dancing, and Flames athletes celebrate their moms. It's all straight ahead. You're watching Flame Central. Welcome to Flame Central, coming to you today from Camp Ice Field at Liberty Softball Stadium, the home of the first place Lady Flames. More on them in just a bit. He's Rhett McGiven. I'm Matt Warner, and we appreciate you tuning in. Yeah, when we left you last week, we didn't know what would happen with former Flames quarterback Malik Willis in the NFL draft. Well, now we know, and he finds himself in a great opportunity. Yeah, he sure does. Music City Malik is what they're calling him after he was selected by the Tennessee Titans. But the waiting he had to endure before being selected was grueling. Willis, who was projected by almost everyone to be a first round draft pick, waited until the 86th pick. That's the third round before hearing his name called. Once the Titans picked him, the emotions of course took over. The tears were flowing for Willis as he was surrounded by family and friends. And while he didn't get picked as highly as he would have liked, Tennessee offers a great opportunity to learn behind Ryan Tannehill while playing for a stable franchise and coaching staff. And after all the draft drama Willis experienced, it was only right that he closed out his draft night with a prayer. Lord, just thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for bringing us all here together. Yes, and we made it safely. Thank you for putting me in this position because it, it's only your plan. Yes, they can say what they want and they can say where we need to be, but you only yeah. want to know where we really need to be. That's it. And I just want to thank you for all you doing in our lives and taking care of us. I ask everybody to get home safely. And I ask we just, you know, we on to the next and just follow you and just be faithful. In the name of Jesus, I pray amen. amen. Great to see Malik lead his family in prayer. Well, if you thought now that the draft was over, that Malik would get a breather, you're wrong. It's right back to work for the newest quarterback on the Titans. To find out what the immediate future holds for Willis, we caught up with ESPN NFL Nation reporter Teron Davenport. The rookie minicamp coming up in your eyes. How important is that? Yeah, rookie minicamp will be next week. And I think it's, it's huge because for a guy like Malik, someone who you want to get in there and start having him uh, digest in the playbook, uh, you want that to happen as soon as possible. So that's big for him just to be able to get on the grass and get out there and, and, and act out some of the things that he'll be learning in the classroom, you know, between now and then. So it's, it's big time for him. And then also he and Traylon Burks, they connected at the combine. So that would be a good opportunity yeah. for them to continue that connection because that's going to be a, a, a receiver quarterback duo for that, that franchise in the future. Can't wait to see highlights of Malik in the double blue next week at rookie camp. If you want to hear the entire interview with Teron Davenport, be sure to check out the Flame Central podcast. You can find it on Apple, Spotify, Google, anywhere you download your podcast, we are there. And make sure you subscribe. We will keep you up to date on Malik's summer as he starts his career with the Tennessee Titans. Well, we talk a lot about Malik, but he was far from the only flame to get an NFL opportunity. Nine other players will also get a shot. Story Jackson signed an undrafted free agent deal with the Cowboys, while Deron Lowe signed with the Rams, Skylar Thomas with the Chargers, and Kevin Shaw with the Bears. Meanwhile, Johnny Huntley and Elijah James have received rookie minicamp invites with Chicago, while Tristan Schultz got an invite with the Dolphins, Cedric Stone with the Commanders, and Ralph Rusins with the Ravens. Best of luck to all of these guys at the next level. It'll be exciting to keep track of those names throughout the summer. All right, let's turn our attention to softball. The Lady Flames have been dominant, to put it nicely, in a sun play, but would face number two in the nation, Virginia Tech, in their final midweek contest of the season in what could be called a measuring stick game. It would start off in great fashion for the Flames with leadoff Devin Howard getting on base. Flames home run leader Caroline Hudson would step to the plate and add to her total. A two-run shot to left would put LU ahead. Bottom of the second, game tied at two, when Tech would put on a master's course and two-out hitting, pushing six runs across to take an 8-2 lead. Top of the third, bases loaded for Mary Claire Wilson. Not known for her power, no problem. She knocks the Flames' fourth grand slam of the season to center field, and we have a two-run ball game. 
Tech would play three more in the bottom of the third to make it 11-6, but then Mary Claire Wilson would step to the plate in the fifth and this time send a three-run bomb to center to bring Liberty back to within two. Wilson would tie a flame single game record with seven RBIs. Unfortunately, that is close as LU would get. The Hokies would take a range shortened contest by a final of 13 to nine. Despite the loss to the Hokies, Liberty is sitting pretty when it comes to the A-Sun. Undefeated on the year and have the top seed in the East Division wrapped up after sweeping the Ospreys just this past weekend. To give you an idea of how good LU has been, the Flames have a run differential of 101 in conference play, over 40 runs better than anyone else in the East Division. We turn to baseball now. The Flames currently tied for first place in the A-Sun East Division, but they went out of conference for a midweek showdown at Wake Forest. The Flames lost to the Demon Deacons in Lynchburg earlier this season. But Liberty would come out swinging in this one. Top of the first, Stephen Hill within two RBI single to score Anderson and Orndorff, putting Liberty on top two to nothing. Jump to the third now. Flames leading 3-2 at that point when three Hillier left the building. A three-run Jack is fourth of the season, and the Flames are up 5-2. But then the Wake Forest bats would make their move, scoring eight unanswered runs the rest of the way. They were aided by a season-high 12 walks allowed by Flames pitchers as the Demon Deacons run away for the win by the final of 10-5. Liberty now turns its sights back to A-Sun Conference play this weekend. Coming up, Liberty Tennis celebrates a postseason bid and the powerful personal story of their head coach, Derek Schwantz. Plus a heartwarming Mother's Day tribute from some of LU's best athletes. That's when Flame Central returns. A college degree is more than a diploma. It's taking control of your future and finding that next step. At Liberty University, we not only care about your career, we also care about your calling. And we want to help you learn, develop, and grow so you can make an impact as a champion for Christ. Over 450 online programs, one you, infinite possibilities.
Hey everyone, welcome back to Flame Central. Well, it's getting to be that time of year where we see teams gather together for watch parties, anxiously waiting to see where and who they'll be playing against in the NCAA tournament. This time for LU, it was the tennis team. And after claiming their second straight ASUN title a week ago over Florida Gulf Coast, the Flames received the news that they had been waiting for. LU will face number 21 NC State in the Raleigh Regionals. Thrilling times for the Liberty Flames as they were scheduled to face the Wolf Pack a year ago in the NCAA Regionals before COVID disrupted their postseason hopes. Now the Flames will prepare to meet a Wolf Pack squad for the first time in program history. Well, Liberty men's tennis coach Derek Schwant has led the Flames to heights never before reached. And while his love for tennis is obvious, it wasn't long ago that he realized the game and his own personal successes weren't fulfilling in and of themselves. It was then that he began searching for something more, and what he found completely changed his life. Three courts, three courts here. For Liberty University men's tennis coach Derek Schwant, the game of tennis has been an integral part of his life from an early age. I started at six years old. My parents were in the, uh, you know, John McEnroe, Jimmy Connors, and, and then that turned into the Sampras Agassi and Chang era. So I kind of grew up with them. They were tennis junkies bringing me out to the court, played junior tennis. Parents took me all over the place to play tournaments all over the country. Schwant's early introduction to the sport, in addition to a great support system and his skills on the court, would help him have a successful career in college and eventually take him all over the world. After college, the fire was in the belly to see how far I could go with tennis. I had a goal and a dream of becoming a professional player and um, to see how high I could reach in the professional ranks. For about three years, I traveled around the world playing futures tournaments, and I absolutely loved it. Making it in pro tennis is a difficult path. And after a few years, as his playing career began to wind down, Swamp would find himself in a new role as that of a coach. But making that transition from player to coach didn't come easy. First coaching job was at University of Virginia. I was 25. My whole life up to that point was about me. I was doing it for myself. How good can I be? Tennis was my God. And then when I started coaching, it becomes about everyone else. How am I gonna impact all of these gifted Division I athletes? And really I had no no ground to stand on except I believed in working hard as a tennis player. I love the game. But if you're talking about coaching, and it goes much deeper than, than skills, tactics, and players know who you are, who you are as a person. They know how you live off the court. And really, my tank was totally empty when it comes to things outside of tennis. When I needed to relax or needed to take a break or needed to enjoy myself, I would go party get drunk and to try to look for satisfaction in relationships and so at the time I thought that was fun you know I really embraced that that continued for for a while into my mid-20s and the further it went um, the less fun the less fulfilling and um, struggled with with serious consequences of that lifestyle as he continued to search for purpose beyond himself Derek would sink deeper into darkness to the point that he even considered taking his own life. That was my life uh, up until 30. When I got the job at Georgia Tech as an assistant, I turned totally empty. That was the kind of the end of, of my journey. I knew that I needed help. I couldn't, couldn't save myself, couldn't help myself. I had no peace. I knew that uh, I wasn't truly a good example for the players. I knew that. I became depressed, empty, no confidence in myself. I was really a mess, a total mess, and I knew it. I was so low that a thought crossed my mind that, man, it would just be easier if I died than to live like this, feeling like this. I was miserable, and I was looking to anything. I was doing yoga. I was reading Buddhism. With all these things I was pursuing, it was kind of like bandage myself up for a little while, and then I would fall back into a um, the same mistake. That's where I was. And when I arrived in Atlanta, I was surrounded by strong Christian men. I recognized um, a peace, a, a joy, a light that these, uh, that these four guys had. They had a peace. 
They had a peace, a joy. They had um, things that I knew I didn't have. Um, so I, I was attracted to, man, how can these guys be so consistent? They have great families and they really care for people. Maybe I should look into this uh, Christian life. Maybe I should ask some questions. Maybe I should read about it. A few months later, one of those men invited him to Easter celebration at his church. And that was when Derek found the true lifeline that he had been looking for. Whenever the preacher would read from the word, I felt God talking directly, directly to my heart. And I said, man, this is, this is different. This is real. And at the end of the service, the preacher said, hey, if anyone wants to follow Jesus, I want you to stand up right now. So in that moment that, that I stood up to receive Jesus, I, I was different. I had power, uh, I had forgiveness. And from one moment to the next, I was, I was a new man. And I woke up in the next morning and all the guilt and shame and weight that I was carrying, gone. And I went from feeling like I had nothing, uh, nothing really to give to these uh, athletes I was coaching to feeling like I had everything, the best thing in the world to share with them, which was the gospel and the word of God, uh, a new life. God really was using these things to grow me. And in 2016, I met my wife in Atlanta and uh, God brought us up to Liberty. And it's been, uh, you know, the best thing that's ever happened to me, only by God, only by, uh, by his power, by his spirit in me. And now here at Liberty, Derek is coaching with a bigger purpose, a Christ-focused mindset that impacts the way he sees his athletes and the way he sees the game of tennis. Go throw his back in. He's a servant leader. He's always someone that, that helps me center things back to Christ. Tennis is, is great. We're all here to become better in tennis. It's fun to play, to compete as a team. But this is a, a thing we get to do together for a few years. It's not gonna last forever. It's temporary. Let's talk about what lasts. Let's talk about um, your disciplines off the court. Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Let's talk about that. So it's Jesus and his 11 disciples. We like to bring the guys over to the house for meals, bring my uh, family over to the courts so they get a chance to see how we interact. <laughs> Definitely uh, don't want to force anything on our players, but we, we believe in being open, transparent. Guys, this is what we'll base our life on, uh, the Word of God. This is what happened to me. This was my experience. So that's where I would start. All right, we've made our way down to the dugout here at Camp Ice Field yes. for a little warm, hot in fuego. Top play, player moment from the past week in Liberty Athletics. All right, Rhett, start us off. Who's our warm athlete here this week? Yeah, warm is Brooke Bryan, lacrosse team. She's from Westlake Village, California. These places where these students are yeah. from, they're like vacation spots for me. Beautiful <laughs> mountains, yeah. you got the lake there. It's fantastic, but Brooke Bryan was excellent. She recorded her 100th point as a flame. She had three three goals, which we expect we from her, expect right? That. We goals think four. That's Brooke right. Bryan, yeah, she's going to put it in the back of the net. Four assists, though, in this game. She was just creative. No look passes left and right. Great dive. She was on fire. Great to see a seven point performance from her. And uh, she has been terrific as the Flames get ready for Ace Unconference play. Yeah, one of the real leaders on that yeah. team is Brooke Bryan. All right, finally, we, or not finally, but yeah. next we go from warm to hot. Who is it? Yeah, Devin Howard on the softball team more on her in just a second from tarpon springs okay which they say is the grease of florida i the guess it has grease the water that yeah you know like the country not oh like the oh grease. i got it i not thought like i was like, Ugh, like no, what is no, this like a bp it. oil spill yeah, or no, something yeah, okay. no not that. okay good <laughs> but Devin howard this young lady yeah. you know she gets it done with the bat she's lead off hitter for a reason she's been over 300 all season long that up around 380 for a large part of the season but sometimes the glove can get her in a little bit of trouble. She had a bit of a spill in the last weekend, but coming into against the Ospreys, man, this young lady was absolutely on fire. She was just torching it. Great throws from deep. And when she can play a really high-end defensive game, the Flames are rocking it. And I think you get a little bit more confidence when your shortstop is just able to really rifle them in there. You can see also 
Paige Bachman over at first base. She gets fired up too when she's throwing in these just fire bombs from short. She's slapping the field, throwing the ball up in the air, gets the whole team fired up. So good to see Devin Howard really coming along defensively when they need it the most. All right, now we finally turn to Enfuego, the top honor this week, and it goes to who? It goes to Garrett Horn. Oh. This is the guy on a Friday night yeah. I want to see out there. Sets the tone yeah. for the whole weekend, and I'm not just talking about these 95-mile-per-hour fastballs. He's drilling in there. Just his attitude. Yeah. This guy gets riled up. He gets a little spicy. He's staring people down I on the other it. team. Like I, I would feel intimidated going up against <laughs> him, but he's got great like off-speed stuff, too. Yeah. He can throw a, you know, a change-up, and he can also throw off some off-speed pitches, breaking balls in there. They're just leaving batters fooled, and when he can bring you know the velocity along with all the other aspects to his arsenal it is a really tough guy to hit and again just the way he stares people down the flex yeah. you saw earlier this guy lights out one of the best pitchers going in the nation right now just a freshman it's gonna be a lot of fun to watch over the next couple years yeah seven no hit innings 12 yeah, strikeouts since last time pretty pretty yeah. darn good all right when we come back we take a look at one of the top moments from the past 50 years of liberty athletics and some flames athletes tell us what's so special about their mothers that's all in flames central returns In 1776, one of the most important documents in our nation's history was penned by one of Virginia's most famous residents. Throughout the next 200 years, the importance of Central Virginia was deeply woven into the tapestry of our nation's history. Liberty University is blessed to be built upon these same historic grounds, furthering the Christian tradition of our founding fathers and training young men and women of character and of calling. At Liberty, you're welcomed into a community rich with history, and we invite you to explore our campus in Central Virginia to discover more than just the surface level. Building upon the tapestry of history, we strive for greatness, humble to be at the heart of where the country began. Hey there, friends. Welcome back to Flame Central. Considering that we're bringing you today's show from the Diamond, we thought that our top moment from the past 50 years should be from there as well. Yeah, this moment's coming from the baseball Diamond. The year was 2013, and Liberty would ride the coattails of some pretty impressive performances. The 2013 postseason. Liberty Baseball in the Columbia, South Carolina Regional facing Clemson in their first game. Catcher Trey Wimmer would drive in a career-high six runs. First pitch, hammer deep to left. Bye-bye, a three-run shot. What a day for the Liberty catcher. And Josh Richardson would toss his third complete game of the season. Here's a ground ball. This may be your ball game. The short over to first, double play, game over, and Liberty has done it. What a day for Josh Richardson on the mound. As the Flames upset Clemson in game one of the regional. 
Two days later, the same teams would meet again in an elimination tilt. Brian Anderud would shine in this one, pounding out four hits and driving in two runs, while Trey Lambert and Ashton Parrott would combine to hold Clemson to just one run as the Flames would defeat the Tigers for a second time, moving them into the first regional championship game in program history. A great moment for Liberty Baseball, and we no hope doubt. to see some more of those in the not-too-distant future, that's for sure. Well, hey, for those of you who aren't aware or perhaps like to live life on the edge just a little bit, it's Mother's Day this weekend. Yeah, if you weren't aware, it may be too late to do much about it now. But Liberty athletes, they knew what was up, and recently many of them shared what makes their moms so special. So my mom's name is Suzanne Sauter, and one word to describe her would probably be hmm, persistent and always encouraging. My mom's name is Natalie. Uh, one word to describe her, I'd probably say strong because she's overcome a lot uh, throughout her life. She's just the motivation that I need and uh, I'm just blessed to have her. My mom's name is Bridget and one word I would use to describe her is loving because she's always been so caring and supportive of me throughout my whole life and I just love her so much. So my mom's name is Jenny and one word to describe her is patient, very patient. My mom's name is Michelle. One word to describe her is loving in all sorts of aspects. She's the most caring and um, respectful person I know, and she always cares for everyone around her. My mom's name is Sarah. Uh, one word I used to describe her is special. I'm thankful for my mother because she always there for me. I can talk to her anytime, and she always make my day better. My mom's name is Julie, and I would describe her as my lifeline because she's always there to pick up calls when I've had a bad day. And she takes care of me and loves me and is always there for me. My mom's name is Angie Mack. Uh, one word to describe her is strong. I say strong because growing up, it was hard, and she got me through everything and my uh, younger brothers. Also, she did it alone, you know, and that's why she's strong. Mom's name is Amy, and one word I can describe her is very special because she is very caring for me and others around her, and she's a very strong Christian woman. One word to describe my mom is steadfast. She has always been there for me, always will be there for me, and she's one of my best friends, and that is why I'm thankful for her. She's always there for me, no matter how bad I play, no matter if I'm winning a tournament or if I finish dead last, she's always my biggest supporter, and she's always there ready to give me a hug and just lift me up no matter what, and that's one of my favorite things about her. I'm thankful for you because you believed in me. I love you. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Happy Mother's Day, Mom, and I am your son of thunder. Happy Mother's Day, Ma, I love you. Happy Mother's Day, Mom, I love you. Happy Mother's Day, Ma, I love you, and you're special. Happy Mother's Day, I love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love you. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Love you. Thank you for everything you've done. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love you so much, and Happy Mother's Day to all the other moms out there as well. Yeah, Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there, certainly. Hey, want to remind you, the Flame Central podcast, check it out, our entire conversation about Malik Willis being drafted into the Tennessee Titans. You don't want to miss it. Find it where all great podcasts are found. Yeah, as well, check out our website, libertyflamecentral.com. You can see all our stories there. Absolutely. For Ryan McGiven, I'm Matt Warner. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. We'll plan on seeing you right back here at Flame Central next time.